अस्सलाम वालेकुम मेरा नाम बिलाल है मैं एक सवाल पूछ सकता हूं ये जरूर बिलाल शो थैंक यू वेरी मच ऑर्गेनाइजिंग द सेशन रियली अप्रिशिएट क्विकली थोड़ा सा बैकग्राउंड ये है कि मेरा अटेंड करने का इंटरेस्ट ये है कि आई एम इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियर और अभी मैं इंडस्ट्रियल ऑटोमेशन और इलेक्ट्रिकल इंडस्ट्री के अंदर काम कर रहा हूं सो आई जस्ट वांट टू सी व्हाट्स आउट देयर फॉर मी इन द डेटा साइंस uh obviously it's a buzzword these days of uh, data analytics and we are talking a lot about data even in scada in iot world so in terms of transitioning into that world of data analytics and what's the benefit is actually going to give me or uska future as a jo core ek engineering background se mana raha uh how do we see okay what's what's the benefit of getting into this field or existing skills and unko bhi kaise implement karke aage bada ja sakta is field ke andar um obviously very interesting field hai machine learning hai ai hai uh but what is what is the major scope for as an engineer if i want to get into this field so i i will be very much interested to know ke uh, what's the future uh, for for engineers in this field right thank you ji assalam alaikum जी मतलब भाई एंड मिस्टर जलानी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई कंग्रेचुलेट यू पीपल फॉर सर्विंग द कम्युनिटी स्पेशली एंड इंट्रोड्यूसिंग सच सच सॉर्ट ऑफ इनिशिएटिव माय कंसर्न रिगार्डिंग दिस प्रोग्राम इज दैट एज फार एज व्हाट इज डाटा साइंस एंड व्हाट इज सर्टिफिकेट ऑफ डाटा साइंस और मास्टर ऑफ डाटा साइंस प्रोबेबली uh one can go to the prospectus and can learn from there uh, uh my concern especially is that uh what uh, could be the or what should be the uh prerequisites uh, uh are there uh to have if someone want to have uh him or her enrolled in a program of data science yeah uh, just all, just sure. say for well just say for example i did my uh, final qualification 20 years back and almost i have uh, uh, no mathematics background i have no it background you know so Sorry, but, well, what's your what's your degree again i did my business administration degree uh, okay. in 20 years back and uh, i am not uh, fluent with the technology i am not uh, then then you you then you may struggle then you may struggle i i don't i don't like that you struggle you know um, i i have the basics of technology but when it comes to programming or when it comes to uh, sort of uh, kind of uh, uh, you know a bit of advanced scenario in that so so uh, what are the uh, prerequisites uh, which will be needed for this program you know Mm. so i'll be interested in that okay right i'll i'll touch on that thank you thank you bye ji assalam alaikum junaid sahab matlab sahab uh thank you for your arranging the session really appreciate it uh just wanted to chat uh, or uh, check with you guys ke uh, our uh, topic mein ai and robot trading specifically mentioned tha to what the matlab uh, today session be primarily around ai and robot trading uh, around uh, you know with the as, as a use case of data science yeah you know it's data science in general that will be covered today ji i'll touch upon all of these things uh, and then uh, as i said based on the people's interest what i'm hearing uh, then i'll spend more time on the project so my plan is uh, to touch on all of these things um basics of ai and then uh, give some examples uh, including the financial uh, industry and then um, and then even in the question and answer we can uh, we can more elaborate and more spend more time on people's specific interest okay. thank you thank you much luksa assalam alaikum ji uh my name is junaid sir Uh, i'm currently working as an asset integrity engineer at a startup mein uh, the startup is technology based and what we use is data analytics and machine learning algorithms to detect different types of 
क्या नाम है anomalies or different types of defects in uh, infrastructure assets which includes oil and gas uh, assets water assets or get dams tunnels and uh, my my interest particularly right now is to sort of i, I don't want to move into data sciences as such but i want to look for better ways to integrate the two technologies like my uh, originally i'm a civil engineer i'm working for this it company technology company but what i'm helping them is to identify defects that are then fed into the segmentation or yeah, the machine learning algorithms or feed of that so i just want to look at a look uh, i'm interested in this seminar mostly based of the integration of two two different kinds of uh, fields all together so uh, it would be nice if you can touch on some uses for example which i mean i mean all, i already know of any uses but uh, kuch aur how how to we can integrate both ai machine learning with engineering as well Mm. Yeah, it sure. might be a little out of your scope. Might be a little out of the scope, but just I thought I'd put it out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right. So, shall we get started, Jalan sir? जी बिल्कुल आप ऐसा कीजिए कि पांच सात सेकंड का पॉज देके तो बिस मिला करके आप स्टार्ट कर दीजिए तो फिर ये जो पिछला हिस्सा है इसको हम डिलीट कर देंगे और वहाँ से फिर आपका ये स्टार्ट हो जाएगा प्रॉपर Okay hello everyone thanks for coming to this evening session uh, on, in which we're going to talk about uh, data science and opportunities related in data science uh, and uh, application of uh, AI and machine learning in def- uh, various domains and uh, I'm Matlu Khushi I'm the program director of Master of Data Science and graduate certificate in data science at the University of uh, Sydney so uh, because uh, i'm i'm obviously representing the university so i'm going to talk about some of uh, our program by uh, absolutely no promotion intention intention is there the intention is to help the community uh, so uh, university absolutely not going to uh, pay me anything extra for promoting this pair or it doesn't in, uh, incorporate into my even kpi and the uh, university have absolutely no shortage of student at all in fact i want to share some stats with you that in during this corona uh, virus period and the, during this pandemic every university suffered and every every program has suffered but it's only our program the postgraduate university programs at our school of computer science it's only these program where we have number of enrollments exploded 30% whereas all the rest of the australia all the other universities the enrollment numbers have gone down to even 30% or 60 40% or very in different universities that by sony sydney university in our in our specifically our program the, the master of data science and the graduate certificate there's a we have a huge number of students there and even uh, we we have more students uh, so we have a luxury of pick and choose actually so, so absolutely there's no intention of promotion but it's about helping the community and helping them to make a right decision so that's why um, uh, i thought i should share that uh, why sydney university is one of the top university in the in the world that we rank fourth in australia in graduate empl- employability there are various uh, ranking schemes there's a qs ranking there's an international there's um, a times higher education ranking uh, but there's a one particular uh, aspect where we really do well is the employ- employability what that does it mean that the employer really prefer our graduates and we're re- really doing better than even some of the top universities such as uh, oxford cambridge or mit or stanford there's so many other so we are sitting as the fourth position in the uh, in the world which is really really good so what that mean if you study at sydney university you giving yourself a best chance to land on your dream job uh, it it doesn't have to be the data science it could be anything so there are various numbers which are usually i go through but i don't think uh, today we have to a luxury of uh, so much time so i'll probably just touch upon uh, uh, because one of the uh, person that asked that, that was the uh, was the admission criteria so probably I'll, i'll jump on to this one so if you come uh, if you have an engineering most of the uh, guys here have an engineering di- discipline which is very great that's what we look for 
uh, if you have a background in a quantitative discipline such as engineering, physics, economics, finance, uh, and it's a four year equivalent to our honors degree, so then we can directly take you guys into master of data science, uh, uh, given that um, you, you have achieved more than 65% mark. But if you have some quantitative uh, this, uh, degree, like uh, one of the guys said, uh, uh, bachelor, uh, he's done the business administration something. So uh, it, it looks like uh, uh, that guy, the, our fellow has to do the graduate certificate in data science first, which is, which is a six months program. So after completing this six months program, if uh, he can maintain his marks more than 65, then he could be admitted to the master of data science program, which is a one year degree. Uh, so, uh, so in Australia, we are the only one who is doing one year Master of Data Science. All the other uh, universities are doing uh, Master of Data Science in two years. So if you're interested to take this program, this is also a good opportunity. Uh, but the problem is uh, our one year program, uh, you won't get a hex uh, fee help from the government. If you are after that kind of uh, thing, that probably then you should go to the UNSW uh, or some of the other university, but then you're going to lose some of the quality that you might get at the Sydney University. So, um, so that's um, the requirement. I've got, I probably don't need to go into the um, detail of uh, what do we teach? There wasn't much interest over there, but I do wanna to touch upon that there are really good opportunities all the time. Whenever I do this kind of session for the last many years, I could see whenever I search on Seek or any search engine, you can see there's a, always there's a good demand of these people. Uh, nearly 2,000 uh, jobs are being advertised right at this moment on the Seek website, right? And if you are if you want to see that, uh, uh, okay, entry level jobs might be low paid, but you, there are really like after you have achieved a couple of years experience, you can easily get 150 plus. Uh, at, at, even if you put this criteria like a minimum as 150, you can still see. See, there are near, uh, nearly over 450 jobs uh, uh, that are advertised, uh, which are ready to pay more than $150,000 per annum, plus, plus some other benefits and you know, super innovation. Look at this one. So if, you, if anybody wanna switch on uh, over to this, uh, uh, this domain, there's a, there's a good prospect out there. So that's, uh, that's one thing. So other people who don't uh, really want to uh, switch over to this domain, but looking for uh, uh, what are the opportunities for them, what they can use the data science in their existing um, field. So I'll give an overview of what the data science is all about. And uh, I'll talk about a little bit of AI and machine learning. And I'm going to tell that it's, it's not a rocket science. It's very simple for engineers. There's, there's um, nothing difficult for them. So data science is a, is, is a new domain, which is, which is evolved in the recent times by the mixture of all these uh, algorithms, machine learning, and we have a data analytics, we use um, stat mathematics, statistics. Uh, so it's a kind of mixture of so many different things that have come together and uh, you get used. Basically, it's all about data. So what do you want, really wanna do? You have, you have a big data, it doesn't have to be big data, but sometimes there are even a few thousand records uh, but you, you wanna extract some knowledge out of that data. So you need to apply some tools, you need to learn how to extract some knowledge out of that, uh, what the data science is all about, extracting knowledge from the data, right? So why do we need uh, computers? And why, why can't we do like, uh, if uh, there are few records there, if you have a uh, few people who've been diagnosed with something, there are few people who've been diagnosed with, it's very easy to basically, uh, analyze the data manually when the numbers are small, right? Um, you might be looking at the cracks in your uh, in your civil engineering work and you want to look at the potential hazards, uh, what could uh, be the causing these hazards. So if the data is small, it's easy to analyze, but the, as the data grow, grows big, the volume becomes big. So it's a really difficult for human to grasp out all knowledge and then, uh, uh, then come to the conclusion. The other thing is the velocity by which nowadays we get that data is really, really fast. Now in engineering domain, like just a look at the Tesla car or any other um, nowadays latest uh, car, there's so many sensors built into it. In a normal flight, um, any like airline plane, they generate millions and trillions of data points. And in, in one, just a flight, they generate more than one terabyte of data. 
So it's, it's a velocity by which the speed of the data is really, really fast. And the variety of the data is really growing. Like nowadays, it's, it's a really big question. Uh, we're rolling out, we're investing billions of dollars in this uh, coronavirus vaccine. But uh, how do you judge whether the, whether the masses will, uh, will be ready to take, the, unless the, ma the masses, the people uh, are ready to take that job, um, it's useless to have, hold, have these vaccines. Uh, there will be no use if you just um, vaccine like 10% uh, of the population or 50%. You have to, so how do you judge that? Obviously, you, then you jump onto the various uh, social media platform and then you judge their sentiments. So what, what do we get on, on the social media? You have a text, you have images, you have a video. So variety of uh, uh, the data is also nowadays really, really getting big. And in the engineering domains, uh, you generate so much different types of data, right? So exponential, there's an exponential growth of this data. So there's no way humans uh, could analyze that data. And, or even a normal tool such as Excel or, you know, a normal kind of uh, databases are, are not able to handle this kind of big data, right? So we do really need some mathematical knowledge, uh, models that can automate this kind of work and extract some knowledge for, for us. And that's where the, um, the data science is all about, right? So in data science, uh, we use machine learning um, a lot, but machine learning is just a one aspect uh, of the whole data science. As I showed in the beginning, there's a big, statistics domain. Uh, you allow, apply lots of such statistical uh, techniques in the data science. But today, obviously, in this small session, uh, we can't talk about everything. So I'm, I'm going to touch about uh, touch upon some uh, machine learning algorithms, some machine learning domain, which you kind of already be most of you be aware of, uh, right? So uh, machine learning is uh, basically is a generic word that we use. The, actually, the artificial intelligence is a more generic word. So machine learning is a set of uh, uh, different uh, methods that we apply. And then deep learning is a special kind of technique in the whole artificial intelligence. So how do you go about uh, analyzing the data? You formulate a research question, you collect the data, and then you apply your various tools, various techniques, and machine learning it is one of the, or artificial intelligent method is one of the uh, highly utilized, uh, one of the tools nowadays. You do, you visualize your data, you do, do some evaluation. And then uh, again, back to your question, whether that has answered your question or not. If not, then we continue to keep going into the circle, right? So I'll uh, skip that. Uh, okay, what's the model? Model, uh, when we say like machine learning model, so all we, we are basically trying to say is uh, Y is a function of X, right? So for, uh, for engineers, it's, it's a, um, it's nothing new. They have done that a lot of time, like in your engineering, in any engineering degree, you would have done your derivatives, you have done your matrices, integrations. Uh, uh, a lot of mathematics is, is very related to the machine learning and the deep learning that we're doing nowadays. Okay, what do, what do we mean by model? Uh, okay, so look at this very small data. On the left, uh, uh, we, we, we have some data points. For example, we are... Uh, uh, we are making a decision which one of these guys are going to cheat on their credit card or whatever type of loan, right? So um, it, it's, it's looked like uh, there, there, there are patterns in all type of data, right? So we are looking for those kind of patterns. So you could have this kind of data that um, uh, whether this guy was a single, what was his income, whether they have refunded the loan or not, and, and then you will have a label next to that person, whether, uh, whether this person has cheated in the past. So cheat is our label. This is something we want to learn from the data that whenever the next time we look at somebody, we look at somebody's income, when we look at somebody's uh, uh, marital status, uh, then we can decide whether this person going to cheat or not, right? Uh, some of these things might uh, sound random, especially the financial markets where people say, uh, the price is always random. I'm going to show you it's not a random. The whole universe uh, is all about patterns and mathematics. And that's what we're doing in uh, machine learning. We're trying to learn those patterns in, in the data. So obviously, when the next time you see this kind of data, uh, whether this person had done a refund, no mar marital status, this, 
uh, what's the income, what's the likelihood of uh, cheating this person that is going to be yes or no. Uh, this is a multivariate problem. Multivariate means you, we have a multiple data points here, but uh, it could be a very single single variant kind of thing. Uh, you have this carbon level, you have a pure purity, and then you decide now this carbon level, what could be the purity, yeah? So it's all about learning this uh, why, predicting why is our predictor. Yeah? So we predicting the y value as a function of x. What's the x? x is our input data points. That could be our refund status income uh, as in this example, right? So uh, we use the word regression when we're trying to, uh, when we're trying to uh, predict the exact price, but such as the, uh, not the price exact number, Right in in term of uh, financial markets, like we're trying to predict the price of uh, Apple, then uh, we could uh, well, we could say this is a regression problem, right? So well, one of the ways you could visualize this data, you could have uh, whatever you could have a one data points on your x, another data uh, data attributes on your y. You can plot it, and then that that uh, the thick line here that could be your machine learning model. That could be an equation. That could be a polynomial equation that could be an explanation or whatever equation that uh, you're trying to fit on this data. Like as an engineer, I hope this would, uh, this would be making sense to you. Uh, you do the equations all the time, trying to fit to the, to the certain type of data. But when, when you visualize it, if, you, if your equation or your predictor like, uh, look like this kind of thing, then we, we say it's, uh, your, your solution or your equation or your designed equation is underfitting, is not really learning all the data in there. But if your equation is kind of touching all the data points, then we say in the machine learning domains that you overfitting, you overfitting your, uh, your data points. So what we really want to do in the machine learning space, come up with an equation that kind of uh, fit nicely across the data. It's not touching all the points, but there's a nice kind of uh, uh, flow and you have a very small error uh, between between the line and the actual data points, right? So this is this is what we want to look for. Nice fit. Uh, in terms of classification, the classification when when we uh, uh, when do we say classification problem? When you want to when you want to predict few classes, for example, uh, you want to predict uh, whether this structure that uh, you're going to propose uh, whether it's going to fall after five years or not, right? Whether it's going to develop any problem in the future, yes or no, yeah? So that's a classification problem. So, or we could sometimes turn a regression problem into classification for problem. For example, we can say, uh, what's the likelihood of uh, Apple's price going up 1% in one week time? So now this is actually, so it's a regression problem initially predicting the price, but then we, we have turned into the classification problem. And again, in the classification problem, you could have a, a number of data points, input data points. When you visualize it, um, again, you make a model, come, come up with an equation, uh, and then you try to fit that to the, model, to the data. So what you want to see that that kind of good fit in the middle. Again, you could have this kind of underfitting situation or this kind of overfitting situation. You want to avoid that. So, so you, want to, you want an equation that kind of have a good, you might be missing few data points, but that's, that's all right. That's happened. So in doing that, uh, we you might sometimes we, we need to generate some uh, biases in the um, in the data, right? So what we usually say is that uh, we should not be biased towards certain things. So we need to come up with an equation which is unbiased, right? So he said this is this is my my joke on the next slide. Just you know, sometimes your if your algorithm is uh, proposing something for a male, which doesn't happen to the male, then yeah, you know, sometimes you need to introduce the biases in your model. Right? So we will see a biased example more uh, in coming slides. Okay, so now uh, let's, I show you what you already know. So machine learning is not a rocker science. It's, uh, most of the stuff you would have learned in your uh, undergraduate degrees uh, or even at your high school. For example, let's see, see this is the uh, y uh, sum of uh, x data points. So that could be um, uh, that could be um, the past prices of a certain stock. That could be the land size of a house, and we're predicting the price of the house. So y is, the, is something that we want to predict. 
So X could be number of bedrooms, X could be number of uh, the size of the building, X could be when was the house was made, and you're predicting the price, the likelihood of the price, right? So you, you this is your past data from which you wanna learn a pattern, right? So as we can see, we, we, we can clearly see there's a linear relation here as the X increases, Y increases, yeah? So that means we can fit a straight line there. And I'm, I'm sure most of you would remember what's the equation of the straight line. Yeah, remember? Y is equal to MX plus B, right? So that was the equation of the straight line. So this is one simple example of model or equation that I was talking about before. So this is just a linear relationship between our input data points and the predictor. And we can see it's a linear relationship. We can fit a single polynomial, simple equation. And the equation of the straight line is y is equal to mx plus 3. This is the same thing. In the machine learning space, the guys made it a little bit fancy. Uh, mx instead of mx, we have a beta x. Uh, and alpha is basically, basically our bias term that we introduce uh, um, uh, y intercept. And uh, this is the epsilon is the, is, the uh, is, is an error, an expected error. You know, you can't be, you can never claim that you are 100% right. There's always, uh, likelihood like you say uh, there's a 90 percent chance of rain happening right you can, you can never say like uh, or there's a hundred percent chance that on certain day certain time the rain will happen right you, you, you can't say this is there's always an element of error so epsilon is error so it's uh, it's nothing fancy there something you were already learned about and then once you come up with an equation an equation could be as simple as uh, a linear equation a straight line equation then you want to find out how good is that equation how good is that so the way you find it out is very simple that's something you all of you would have learned um, in your degrees is you come up uh, with uh, some of scared arrows right so what you do you look at uh, the actual this is your actual data points the black one and the blue is your uh, predicted line the, the line that uh, that you fit the equation and that means you this is your green one is your predicted you actually predicting this price the green one but the actual price is this one. So difference between the prediction and the actual price is your error, right? So that's, that's what y hat is your um, um, predicted price, y is an actual price. So you take a difference of that, you sum that up, sigma is a sum, and then uh, uh, first you take a scale. Why, you know why do we, um, we, we need to take a scale? Because we don't care about the negative or positive error. All we care about the arrow. So, so we need to get rid of that negative thing, yeah? So the easiest way to get rid of that negative sign, you just take a subtraction, take a scare of it, and then just uh, add them up. So it's a sum. So that's a sum of scare error, right? So that's how you can uh, uh, judge uh, or you can calculate uh, that how good any machine learning model is, yeah? So let's uh, look at that and then, uh, well, now we want to turn that uh, straight line equation. Not, not all the, the problems could be solved with a straight line, right? So sometimes we need to uh, solve a classification problem, like uh, what's the likelihood of happening this and that, yes or no, true or false. We have a data for normal patient. We have a data for uh, um, cancer patient. Now you, you have a new patient or coming in, then you want to predict what's the likelihood of this person uh, being a normal or malignant or a cancerous patient. So that's a kind of um, a logistic regression. When you, when you have to decide between the two things, yeah, that's your logistic regression. A number of data points comes in and then uh, you will do your Y predictor. predictor. That's your, but the Y predictor will only give, uh, give you two classes. Okay. How do you do that? Again, there's no rocket science is the same, uh, same equation of straight line. Um, alpha plus beta, which basically, which is mx plus b. And then uh, we put that uh, onto the power of epsilon with the negative sign, you plus it down, and then you divide it all with the, with the one. So what this is gonna have, what with, uh, this is gonna do, it's gonna convert any number into a number between zero and one. So why do you wanna do that? The reason is simple, yeah, because uh, if you're just predicting something Based on uh, based on age, for example, age and BMI. Uh, so, what's the cutoff of uh, certain age? So it's very difficult to come up with uh, uh, with some sort of number that uh, for uh, for this kind of problem that this is the maximum number. 
So when we convert those numbers into a linear length of zero and one, then the problem become very easy. And uh, we use a simple method, uh, uh, equation of straight line, and then using this sigmoid equation. And you use that you know, in the deep learning a lot as well as in one of the activation function in the deep learning space. Right. So in this, uh, now the uh, logistic regression, basically the two class problem become very easy. You say, if my prediction Y is greater than 0.5, then your class is one. If your prediction is uh, less than 0.5, then, the, then your class or your type could be zero. So you could define that initially, what, what do you mean by zero and one? So, okay, how I'm going with the time. All right, so you, even uh, some of the people who doesn't know a lot of mathematics or you kind of forgot them, you don't really need um, uh, all of those mathematical equations. You don't have to really do that. All. A lot of work have, has already been done for you. All you need to do is to learn some sort of language and Python is the best language that being utilized nowadays uh, uh, in the machine learning and deep learning space. And uh, all the problems have been solved for you. All these regression classification clustering and dimensionality reduction problems are part of one um, one library. You just learn the use of these libraries. That's, that's what you do as a data scientist. You don't need to learn the wheel. You don't need to invent the new wheels. Everything is there. A data scientist, the role of the data scientist is to learn all these methodology, the techniques, and then, um, uh, then with an experience, you know what kind of uh, uh, tool you're going to apply to what kind of problem. And as I said, everything has been sold. All, 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 this is very easy to apply these uh, these library. Uh, probably- Sorry, I will interrupt you Mukluvai, for a second. We have only one minute left. So you can start again from this slide. So guys, once you will be out of this session, please join again and then we will start it again. So I think only less than one minute left. So thank you very much everybody. If you have a question, and you can ask at the end as well. Right, thank you, Jhani uh, So, um, So as, as a people who are uh, not very good with the mathematics, uh, so mathematics is very good for, for somebody to learn what's happening behind the scene. So you apply a simple class of uh, regression, you give these data points, you apply that uh, one cycle learn function, and then it's gonna predict you the uh, y output as a 0 0.5 and then, but you don't know what's happening under the hood. So that's where uh, some mathematical knowledge is good to learn. But if most of the, I would say most of the engineers would have learned that basic knowledge already. And some of the knowledge that you also learn as part of your, uh, if you really shift into this problem, this domain, then you learn that part of your degree. Uh, doesn't matter which university you go to. Uh, but if you're not shifting to that, uh, this, uh, this domain, then you don't really need to even learn what's happening under the hood. You know your domain, you are an ele uh, electrical engineer, civil engineer, or whatever engineer, uh, you know your data, and then you want to learn some patterns in that data. And as we know, the universe is all about patterns. Humans are, um, are made of patterns. So there's a pat there are patterns everywhere. And you'll be amazed, and uh, we should be amazed, uh, like how many patterns are out there in every sort of thing. So all these machine learning and different tools are basically all about learning these people of just a one library. So it's been so many things been already built into this. All you need to learn how to uh, invoke a function, pass the data and get the predictor out of it. Um, uh, and then you need to learn what's the accuracy, difference between accuracy, precision, and recall. And uh, probably I won't go into much detail at this point of time, but uh, just, Maybe it'll give you a little bit of an idea about the accuracy and, and the precision. Uh, sometimes it's very important uh, to have that, uh, very important to know what you're predicting. So, and uh, what's important in one, what type of, uh, uh, what type of problem. For example, in a stock, uh, in the stock domain, you, uh, you are only interested in uh, investing your money when the price is likely to go up, right? So now you, you developed a machine learning method or artificial method, which could predict you uh, um, the, price, the likelihood of price going down all the time correct, but uh, the, the likelihood of uh, uh, the price is going uh, up, the, the, the accuracy is not really good in there. So we, we then call it, uh, we then look at the precision basically. 
Uh, so in the accuracy, you could have 99 times you could have predicted correctly that the market is going down, down but you are not really interested in those 99. You are interested in, in the 1% of that uh, chance, chance of that 1% good price going up, yeah? So at that point, you look at the, at the precision that the basically it's been get, get calculated at the uh, true positive divided by the true positive and the false positive. How many times you predict the thing which is which are which was false positive? Anyway, that could be a little bit more technical. Uh, we could talk about this uh, in the question answer session if you are interested. But uh, I think it's just a pointer here. I'll give you a couple of examples. As I said, I'm going to talk about uh, some financial spaces. So many times the the financial industry say that the prices of uh, um, a financial instrument such as uh, stock or Forex or this uh, cryptocurrency is a random walk, but you could really see some patterns there. The Bitcoin price uh, went up, started to go up always. And then there's always after some time, there's a pullover and then going up and then going down. Similarly, you can see that in the chart target price, AUD USD, uh, the price has been going down for last a reasonable time and then the coronavirus hit and then there was some sometime it uh, started to go up as well. So um, there was a guy called Elliot uh, and he came up with an idea to, uh, by looking at the 200 um, years of market. Then whenever the market goes up, it goes up in a five cycles. Uh, uh, these, and then he devised these waves, basically they call the bullish or the bearish waves. So whenever you did the market going up, the market go up in a five waves and then uh, the pullover happened in three waves. Right? So whenever there's a wave one happened, then uh, there's a pullover, the price comes a little bit down and then the wave three is always very strong and then pullover and then the wave five and then the, when the peak happens, then the, uh, then the price returns and then this cycle continues as long as the market is bullish. In the bearish market, it's opposite. Basically, the price goes down in the five waves, price goes up, up in, the, in the three waves, right? So basically, we're trying to say there are patterns everywhere. There are patterns. So there are, these are indicators in the financial industry. Maybe I can skip that. Uh, more details on the indicators, uh, probably... I can uh, skip that too, but I'll give you this idea here that uh, we've done a project where we defined the zigzag indicators and we tried to uh, uh, automatically label these waves by the computational methods of one, two, three, four, five. And then based on that, that means we could, once we know that we are in a wave three, that means we can predict there's a wave four coming up. And once uh, you get somewhere close and uh, to the wave, for bottom, then you can predict that wave five could be in an action and there's an opportunity to make some money. So we designed these indicators. These are, there are some uh, basic uh, criteria of uh, the indicators. And then we designed some uh, events, more event or uh, based on the moving averages. As you all know, moving average is a moving window. You take up five values, you do an average and then uh, continue to go uh, continue to move up into the into the data points, continue to take average. average. This is called your moving averages. So based on two crossover averages, we de designed some events. And then we, the, then we, when we uh, designed a machine learning uh, methodology to automatically pick up these waves and these uh, averages, uh, then after that learning and designing some mathematical equations, uh, so then we put the system into test uh, uh, by designing a automatic uh, buying and selling algorithms. So um, there's a, we, we said, okay, if we're observing the price here, so we want uh, uh, to take a profit somewhere up there. And if the price goes in the reverse direction, so we just sell and take, take accept a loss. So obviously our, uh, we can never be 100% uh, correct. Some of the time we have to take the lose loss so we have to define a criteria based on which we are ready to accept our loss. So uh, we tested on um, various machine learning. These are the machine learning algorithms that you learn part of your any data science degree or whenever you learn any machine learning course, SVM, LKNN, uh, very popular methods, decision-based trees. Uh, and then we, uh, we've done some back testing so what we have observed is there's a, a you lose the trade is uh, here in the 
in the red section here is showing that did many trades we lost uh, and then green one is uh, how many trades we won but, and we could see that uh, the number of trades that won in this is back testing we tested on 14 years of data uh, and then we we've uh, seen that there's a, a lot of opportunity and we have also observed that uh, on the 15 minutes so this is a one hour data so we trading on one hour data and this is a we trading on daily data and this is h4 mean we trading on uh, four hours data and m15 mean we trading on 15 minutes data so we can see that uh, uh, on the 15 minutes data, there's a likelihood of making more winning trades is higher than the other time frame. So this kind of data analysis gives you a bit of confidence and the, based on that back testing and give you some idea that what time frame that you want to trade if you want to learn some trading and want to do uh, uh, some something in this space. So by doing this kind of analysis, then you can see that the likelihood of making money, obviously, you you will lose uh, some money there are losing trade that there will always be losing trades uh, uh, and uh, you could be unlucky lucky sometimes you just started up a uh, trading system trading real trading and then you might be uh, straight away losing but if you have this kind of confidence system built into it then you 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 your likelihood of making money or winning the trades are higher than uh, based on your sentiments that you based on just coming up with an idea of mind or uh, I believe the market will going up or down, but, but if you have some solid analysis uh, backing up your sentiments, then you could be in a bit more confidence. So obviously um, uh, I don't only research on financial spaces, uh, my, my one of the area that I work on, I've published quite a few papers in this domain. So if you look me up on the YouTube, I have a lot of uh, projects uh, there and I've uploaded quite a few of my students' presentations up there. Um, and a lot of these presentations go into the technical details. How did they do an analysis? You might be able to find some project and I'm going to upload uh, very soon. Hopefully by end of this week, I'm going to upload some more videos uh, by um, uh, from my last semester. And uh, we have a variety of uh, different uh, projects in the healthcare sector. And uh, also we, some of my uh, students come from the engineering domain actually we pumped through many engineers uh, who ended up becoming a data scientist uh, um, and obviously i'm one of them uh, so um, uh, many of the projects are also engineering projects basically uh, in one of the project uh, my students uh, looked at the likelihood of uh, um, basically generating or uh, what's the likelihood getting more oil from certain uh, type of wells Petroleum, he was from the petroleum industry. I don't really understand much of the terminology. So basically, uh, you are the domain of expert. You know your data. All you need to know just to learn some techniques, how to explore, how to exploit those kind of data. And you can do it yourself. There are so many YouTube videos, uh, and I'm just uh, uh, one of the, those uh, few videos up there. But obviously, there's an ocean of study. But if you just have uh, want to analyze your own type of data, then probably you can just learn on your own and apply some data science uh, skills there and uh, uh, will, uh, generate some plots and that will give you some better hint of what's happening under the hood in your data. Okay, so probably we'll take uh, now questions and uh, depends on the questions. Uh, I think uh, we can go back and revise some of the things that we just discussed. Thank you guys for coming to the session and I'm happy to listen to your